when we vector diagram, I want to, now that we've gone through, through this, I want to go through and show you uh, how we vector diagram. Now, let's say that on the high side, I know what my system voltage is. Let's say in my high side, I know that I have a, a 4160 three-phase four-wire. Now, I look at that and I know this 4160 is a phase-to-phase -phase value. I look at the four-wire and I know it's a Y system. Then I know that what I have available is 2400 to ground in phase-to-phase -phase 4160. Okay, now let's go over here and I'll put a transformer reading. Let's say I have 2400. I'm picking on the same voltages. I shouldn't do that, but let's just... Let's say I've got a tub on the high side that's rated 2400-4160. Okay. Now we're going to, let's, let's go three phase now. You guys can handle that. Let's go three phase. Let's, let's say I've got three tubs and they're all rated on the high side like this. And I've got, I've got my system up here. I've got my uh, 4163 phase four wire. Now, when I look at this tub, the high side is going to tell me what kind of a connection I'm going to have. I know that I've got a 4160 system and it's telling me to connect at Y. So I've got three tubs. When I draw my Y diagram, I'll do it like this. I'll draw a Y. Oop, got to straighten up a little bit. Try and draw it kind of halfway accurate here, graphically accurate. Of course, in the, in the third year, fourth year, you're, you're, uh, you're not going to be scaling it out. But uh, third year, you have to scale it out. So it has to be fairly accurate. Uh, now, I've got my vector configuration here. I can put my phases on there. I know that my phases go clockwise. I'll put my phases A, B, and C like that. See. Now, the one thing that I haven't talked about that you need to know. Now, we've got the high side pretty much to the point where we can, we, we, we've got that pretty well taken care of. But uh, let's say on the low side I have some ratings. Now, the low side connection is dependent on the numbers, the secondary rating numbers, not the number of wires. Now we're, now we're getting down to the consumer's level. We can't go by the number of wires as to how we connect on for the consumer. Let's say this consumer that we've got wants, wants uh, uh, 120, 240, three phase four wire. Now the determining factor for what you make for a connection on the low side is these numbers right there. Anytime it's a full value or a one to two ratio in your numbers, then you have to make a delta connection on the low side. Okay. Now, on the other hand, if I have numbers that look like this, I'll say 120, 208, three phase, four wire. Okay. Now, looking at those numbers, you see we have 1 to 1.73. Another uh, example of that one would be 277 slant 480 three-phase, four-wire. Now there again, 1 to 1.73, 1 to 1.73. If I, if I wanted this rating, I know that I'm going to have a Y connection on the low side. And that what I'm going to have to do, of course, in this transformer here, uh, you'll find that that transformer right there is normally you're going to have a two bushing if it's single phase and the only voltage you'll get out of that will be 277. But with this one, you're going to see that you're going to have to take a, a 120, 240 volt rating on your tub. In other words, if I had 120, whoop, I better come down so you can see it. If I had 120, 240, that I'm going to have to take that tub and make 120 volt out of it because I want 120 volt out of it so that I can Y connect it like this 
In other words, each one of these tubs will be 120 volt all the way around. And if I do that between my phases now, take the 120 times 1.73 and I'll have my 208, see? And it'll be four wire. So the, this is what you have to be concerned about when you make the low side, is whether it's one to one point, or it's one or a one to two relationship. In other words, you see this one, if I, if I use this 240 volt, you see, uh, and I want uh, three phase three wire, you see, in other words, I want power load only out of that thing, then it's gonna be a delta connection. If it's one to two, it's gonna be delta. So let's let's uh, let me sh let me go through now on your delta connections and show you what possibilities are available on that 240 or 120 240. If I know that I want a delta connection, and I'll draw a delta diagram here, and my tubs each of them are rated at 240 volt, then you see between my phases all the way around, I'm going to get 240 volts. And if I wanted 240 three phase three wire. In other words, I don't want any lighting load. All I want is power load out of this. Then I want to take one of my corners. It doesn't make any difference which one. Now, normally on the diagrams, you're going to see that I've got uh, the C and the uh, and your neutral one and the same. You can take any one of the phases actually and do that. But uh, on there, that all of them I've used a template and so on and and a master, and, and, and all of them are C, but it could be any one of them that are grounded. It's, uh, it doesn't make any difference, like I say. Now, if I, if I turn around and say C is grounded on all those, I'll say that we've got A, B, and C, and we make this corner over here C grounded. That means I throw a ground on it right there, see? Now, transform or uh, voltage rating-wise, between my phases with that ground on there, I've still got 240 all the way around. And if I say what my phase value is to neutral, then my C and my neutral are one and the same. I'd have to say, okay, A to neutral is 240, B to neutral is 240, C to neutral, because C is grounded and they're tied together, then I've got zero. There's no voltage. If it was a system where I had, like a high side system where I had a delta and I didn't have any ground on it, uh, then I'd have no reference to ground. And then anytime there's no reference to ground, just draw a line through it. You don't have a, a ground as such. Okay, now the other possibility on your delta now is to say you want lighting load. You want 120 volt available. Now here's where our one to two comes from. Here's where our fourth wire also comes from right here. Now there we're gonna take our, our X2 terminal on one of our tubs right here and then we're gonna ground it. Now, in a situation like that, we don't have a corner ground. And now, voltage value-wise, you see, this is my neutral. Voltage-wise, now you can see I'm going to have uh, A to my neutral. I've got half the 240 or 120. My C to neutral is the same thing. My A, B, and C all the way around are, are the same. I'm going to have 240 volt. So now, there's where our four wire comes from. So when you get down to the consumer's level, our voltage is below 2,400 volt. Don't go by the number of wires as to whether it's a wire or a delta connection. You can't do that. We can only do that on our distribution systems, our subtransmission, and on up into our higher voltages. Okay? Now, if we have a Y system, in other words, say, I might, say my rating is 120, 208 for the low side, three phase, four wire. There again, four wire, but now this is Y. But the reason it's Y is because I've got a 1 to 1.73 relationship in those two numbers. So that I know on the low side, by my secondary rating, that I want Y. So now here's, your, here's, your, here's one of your alternatives, and then here's the other one. Right there. Go by those numbers as to whether it's a Y or a delta connection on the low side. Now, if I go through, and let, let's say that on the low side that I want, uh, that, I, that I'm going to have a, a delta connection. Let's say I'm going to have a, 
uh, one to two. I'm going to have 120, 243 phase, four wire on the low side of this bank. Okay. Now, we said that on a Y delta that uh, our displacement could either be 30 or, or, uh, or it could be uh, 210. Let me show you how you will figure out the vector configuration. And you're better off before you put your polarity in for your transformers in your diagram is to draw both sides. And you'll see that when I go through the transformer connections with you. But let's say I know that I want a Y delta and a 30 degree displacement. Now remember on your diagrams on the high and low side, your phases when you end up are always going to be in the clockwise direction. That'll never be anything other than that. If I know that I want a delta down here and I want a 30 degree displacement, then I know each of the phases are going to move in the clockwise direction 30 degrees further. You see, it's going to go 30 degrees further. Now, if A goes 30, here's the center of my diagram. If A goes 30 degrees further, then my low side is going to move up there. Now, on your, when you identify your phases, on the high side, use uppercase letters, and on the lower diagrams, use, use uh, on, your, on your secondary diagrams, on your low side, use lowercase letters. Now, I'm just going to superimpose my diagram right on top of this, and then I'll, uh, I'll show you what, really how it's going to end up. Now, if A goes 30 degrees, B goes 30 degrees, and C goes 30 degrees, that's where they're going to end up. Now, if you've drawn it right, all your lines will be parallel with other lines. You'll always have from high to low and low to high, there will always be lines that are parallel with one another. Now, if I was to, I'll put dotted lines up here. If I was to fill in the positions that they'll be, it'll look like this. And if I had it drawn graphically accurate, it would look a little better than that. But it, you can see that I've got a line here that's parallel with a line here, see? And I've got a line here that's supposed to be parallel with a line here, see? And I've got one line here that's parallel with this one over here. I should say one vector. In other words, see how my vectors uh, align themselves? Now, the vectors that are parallel represent the same phase angle. The, the vectors that are parallel represent the same phase angles. If I, uh, if I go from high to low, those vec that can't change because I'm establishing my polarity on the high side. I can move them on their axis, but I can't change their direction and I can just I can just turn around and move them on their axis. See, I can pick that vector up and I can do anything I want with that as long as it is in the same direction and parallel. So that means the the lines that are parallel represent the same transformer because they're on the same phase angle. So here, if this happens to be transformer one down here, this one going through here like that, then this has to be transformer one up here. See. <coughs> If this one up here happens to be, on the high side, happens to be transformer 2, then this one over here has to be transformer 2 on the low side, see? Okay? Now, if this one over here then, as you see, we've gone from uh, here to there to over to here, then this one over here has to be transformer 3. Okay? Now, I'll draw those diagrams away from one another because on the high side now, what we know we've got is this situation, and on the low side, I've got this situation, see? Okay, we had A, B, C, A, B, C, always clockwise, you see? Okay, now, if this is transformer one on the high side, and this is transformer one on the low side, then their vectors have to be going in the same geographic direction. Now, it doesn't make a bit of difference whether it's additive or subtractive transformers, whatever the case might be. They're still going to be going in the same direction. So that means up here now, if I go X1 to X3, then this one has to go H1 to H2. Now, I could have gone either way. On this one down here, it doesn't make any difference really uh, 
which way you go, which, but as long as they correspond. In other words, if I have a vector arrow going that way, this one has to go the same direction. See how transformer one goes east? On the low side, it's also going east. Up here, if I go H1 to H2 like this, okay, that's, that happens to be transformer two. This is transformer two. Then my, vec my polarity is in this direction. That means that's X1, X3, X1, X3, H1, H2. We'll ground the high side. Okay, see how we've done that? Now, now what I've got right here, if I want 120, 240, four wire, then I know that I've got to ground one of my tubs in the center. And so my fourth wire comes from that ground that I put in the center. If I want to leave it at three wire, if I want to leave this at three wire, then I take one of my phases, and it doesn't make any difference which one, but like I say in my forums, I'm using all C's, so that's all right too. But here we, we'll turn around, we'll ground that. Now, now we're leaving it at three wire, okay? Now this is the way, this is the way you will vector diagram. Always make sure that on the low side, you go by the numbers. If it's one to two, it's delta. If it's one to 1.73, then it's gonna be a Y connection on the low side. Something else to remember on the Y on the low side, it's always grounded in the center. One other thing I want to add, and uh, that's that if I make a Y on the low side, if I make a if I make a Y on the low side, let's say that I'm I'm making a Y on the low side, and that I'm using a three bushing transformer which has internal connections that I'm making. In other words, I'm going to parallel and, I, and my, my X1 and my X2 are going to be my 120 volt. Always make sure if it's a three bushing transformer that your, your X2s are inside and your X1 is outside. And uh, that's for standardization as well. Now that means if I had a a Y on the high side and a Y on the low side, you're going to want to put your vector configuration in there first. Identif uh, draw your vector configuration and then put your terminals, the direction that they have to be down here first, then go up here and identify them. Because if I, if I had, now like the way I've got this, you see I would have a zero degree displacement, right? In other words, I could set that right on top of it, I've got a zero degree displacement. 180 degree displacement, if I had a Y on the low side now, my, my A is going to go 180 degrees over here. Okay, my C is going to go 180 up here, and my B is going to go 180 down here. Now you see what I've got there? I've got a situation where my diagram down here would look like this. And then my A is going to be there, my B here, and my C there. Now I still want my X2s inside. Now I'm establishing, in other words, X1 to X2. I'm establishing my polarity, this time in the westerly direction. That means this one has to be west. That means then I'm going to have to have H1 inside and my H2s outside. You, it doesn't make any difference up above which one is grounded. You'd have to have two bushing transformer, of course. You just want to make sure that, that your X2 on your low side is always on the inside when you have a three bushing tub. When you have a four bushing tub, it doesn't make any difference. If you have a two bushing tub, it doesn't make any difference. Just make sure that that three bushing that you have your X2s inside. And then, of course, if you have a Y, Y, both sides are always grounded. There'll never be anything other than that. Uh, on, your, on your four bushing, on your four bushing, you want to make sure that you're using X4 and your X1 for a vector uh, when you parallel. Uh, if you series connect, it'll still be X1 and X4, and then you're going to... So it, it, it all depends on what voltage value you're trying to come up with on your vector. I, uh, I don't think too many people have a problem with that. 
other than to make Doug unsure that you know what a four bushing transformer rating is.